guys what's up it's melanie today we're going to be spraying a lot of stuff with diy paint i don't know about you but sometimes i get myself in a pickle and i have to get a lot done real fast we're dealing with a lot of end tables here today so i'm going to give each one of them a nice little sanding on the top make sure that my paint is going to totally adhere all right, let's start out with Harbor Freight Central Pneumatic HPLB Gravity Fed Spray Gun. We're going to start with that. We're using Tarnish Pearl and we need to dilute it. General rule of thumb is about 20% for DIY. Although I do always end up kind of putting another splash or two in there. Fine for me as I go along with this, it's really about the way the paint feels when you're stirring it, like how much drag do you have when you're stirring it back and forth. That's kind of the way I can tell more than anything because it'll look really thin, but it still feels kind of thick. That's when I know I need another splash. If you want to stick around till the end of this video, I'm going to go through these two sprayers and show you all their knobs and turny dealies and how to adjust everything, your compressor, all that fun stuff. I'm going to make it short for now though. So if you don't want the details, you don't have to stay to the end. I don't care what kind of paint you're using, you need to strain it. You can use a paint strainer. I have this one that's reusable and it seems to work just fine for me, but strain it out because whether you think so or not, whether it's a brand new can of paint or not that you're mixing in there, you're gonna have some chunks. You'll be surprised. Super important because all those little chunks are gonna get caught in your sprayer. They're gonna ruin your finish and your spraying experience is, yeah, it's just gonna suck. All right, first thing we're gonna talk about is this little nozzle at the end. If you loosen up that band, you're able to turn it like this and this is what's gonna make your spray go horizontal or vertical. Very important in what you're spraying. You're doing a table leg, you probably want it to go vertical. No, you want it to go horizontal. If you're doing a tabletop, you want it to go vertical. You need to get it so it's going the proper direction on how you're spraying, what you're spraying. There you say, why Melanie? Why, why does it matter? Well, a couple different things. You want it to go on smoothly and you also don't want to be wasting paint. You don't need it going everywhere that it doesn't need to be going. All right, so this knob here on the side is your flow adjuster. What it's going to do is determine if you have like a straight shooter outer or if you have a wide span. Um, usually somewhere in the middle works well for me. Again, wait till the end of the video and I'm gonna go into more detail on how to use all these knobs. All right, this guy back here is determining how much paint is being released along with the air. The air is down there at the bottom, the paint is at the back. Let's get moving. We're gonna plug this guy into our compressor. God, I couldn't find a regular mask. Seems through COVID, I have worn all of my disposable masks and I'm definitely not wearing one of my cool ones that I wear out in public. Got this big guy on and um, let's see how long it lasts. Let's go ahead and set this for vertical spraying and let's get started. All right, so as you spray, you wanna stay about six inches away from your piece and you wanna do long strokes. You're gonna overlap on the side, you're gonna release your trigger and then you're gonna hit it again going back. You wanna overlap a little bit as you go down horizontally also. Just take it slow and um, get a nice good cover on there. If you're getting too much pain, it's time to start adjusting. It's definitely a key to this sprayer that I'm using right now that I didn't show you. And I'm gonna show you at the end. All right, we were going side to side, and now we're gonna go down. So I'm gonna turn the nozzle on my sprayer, have it adjusted, and let's start doing real long strokes all the way down. 
Again, we're overlapping and we are keeping our wrist straight. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. You don't want your wrist bending. You want your entire arm to move. So just pretend like they're kind of cemented together. All right, let's get this done. thing about this sprayer is you use every drop of paint being that it's gravity fed so I'm gonna go ahead and fill that up and uh, yep let's keep going Right, coat number one is done. It's still thin in areas, definitely. It's just one coat of white. What can we, uh, we don't expect more, right? All right, let's go ahead and um, give it another one. So here's what I was kind of talking about, like the resistance that you feel with the thing. It looks really thin, but I still feel a little bit of resistance. Another little splash and uh, I think we'll be right where we need to be. All right, we're gonna finish this up. It's gonna be pretty darn solid. Well, it is gonna be solid. For a white, two coats, thinned out, man, you can't beat DIY for that, that's for sure. So you can see, as I get to each side, I release that trigger. I go over it though. I go past the side of the furniture just a tad, release that trigger, push it again, go back. Okay, we've got two good coats on there. Let's go ahead and distress these back a little bit. This is just like a fine medium sanding pad. We're gonna give it a little scrub down, make that paint nice and smooth before we move on. This pad here has a little bit more grit to it and I'm gonna use this because I want to bring out that metal underneath there and show the cool details on these mid-century pieces. 
All right, now we're gonna be using the Critter Sprayer. This is probably the simplest sprayer they make. There's only one adjustment on it. You take it and you hook it up to a regular mason jar, which is really nice because then if you have any leftover paint, you can just put the lid on that mason jar and store it just like that. Um, today we're using Wise Owl's varnish in matte. This little guy here is the only adjustment that there is. If you push it up about halfway through the middle of that top hole, you're probably going to get the best stream that you want there. Pull it all the way back down, you're just going to get air. Alright, again, I'm just going to stay back about six inches and do the exact same thing back and forth nice and slow getting a steady stream on there overlapping and turning it off and I, as i get to the end of each side of the piece all right two coats of top coat you want to sand lightly with that fine sanding pad in between make sure that each layer of top coat adheres to the previous layer and yeah we're good to go Quickie update on my toads. If you've been following along with that, it's time to let them go. It's too darn hot in my, hot in my backyard, and um, they keep jumping out, landing on my patio, and frying. So let's take them over the ditch. My daughter Miranda went with me, and um, time to say goodbye. Bye, babies. I have to admit, I am worried about them. Most likely they're dead. I looked it up and um, only 1% of tadpoles survive. That's not very good statistics. All right, so if you're done, you're done. If you want to learn more about the two sprayers I've used, hang out, here we go. So, okay, this one is your gravity fed. This cup comes off. Okay, this cup comes off like this. All right, so let's just leave that off. It goes on like this. This is where you pour your diluted and um, sifted. You want to strain your paint, right? Strain it. I think I got that across pretty good. Your cap goes back on. Make sure it's on there right. The threads are a little bit, I don't know. Sometimes they're just a little bit. Okay. So this is your trigger. This is what releases it. This guy, as we talked about, is what you could change to change the direction of your paint. Okay, then like that. So you just tighten that guy back up and there you go. Over here on this side, you have your adjustments for your flow. So if you go all the way forward, which a lot of people think is a really good idea, it's gonna go really, really wide, okay? Really, really wide, but what's gonna happen is right there in that center, right in the center is gonna be um, kind of bare and then on the sides, it's gonna be thick. So you want to adjust that. If you're doing like a table leg, you wanna put it down smaller because it's a small stream, that's, that's a good idea. That'll save you some paint. This one here at the back, this is where you play with how much paint is getting put into the gun. That mixed with the air is going to get you the perfect combination. So you have to play with this. All compressors are different, everything's different. So you gotta play a little bit. Use water, use something, play, get it just right, okay? Now I messed mine up, just for you guys, I had it set just right, but all right. Okay, so this pressure regulator at the bottom here, um, some of them come with it, some of you have to buy separate, but it's very, very important. I find that with this sprayer, 40 pounds of pressure here is what's really important. You're gonna adjust that here. You pull that out, see how that just moved? Pull it out, 
you turn it up or down, push it back in. But 40 pounds here, whatever it says on your compressor itself is not that important. It's 40 pounds here, which is gonna get you a really good paint spray once you have your paint. Um, once you have this to the right spot, this is what's gonna get you the right one. This is actually the air that comes in. We're just gonna open that. We just leave it open all the way because this guy's what's gonna regulate it. All right, so you plug in your compressor. You should have a quick connect. Plug that sucker in there. You hook it up, and then you're gonna check. So it says 40, but if I, it goes right back to 40. All right, so how are you gonna clean this bad boy? You're done, right? This is what I do. I'm sure there's more fantastic ways to do it, but what I do is I go over to the hose. In the winter, I will go to the hose first and then go to the kitchen sink because it's cold. Um, what I do is I take this entire thing off and I take this off. So I'm gonna hose this bad boy out, hose this out. And then this here, here, I'm gonna stick my hose like pretty high pressure right in there and pull the trigger. And I'm gonna just gonna do that until it drains clear. So this is all fleshed out. Then I'm gonna just spray these guys off. You can buy like these little metal brushes. I'll show you one. Right. So it's gonna come with something like this or like this. I honestly don't remember which one was for which, but one of these brushes is gonna come with it. So you can get down in all these little dudes, okay? Um, when you take this off. But for the nozzle itself, these little air holes are important. They stay clear. So these guys, you can buy these guys. Um, these are actually three for a buck at the Dollar Tree. But you can also get them at any hardware place next to all your wire brushes. And I just give it a, okay? So I blew it all out, blew it all out. I cleaned my nozzle. I sprayed water through here until it ran clear. I fill this cup back up, screw it back on, go back to my compressor and just blow clean water through it, okay? For like a whole cup, clean water through it. I adjust it up and down, adjust my flow, make sure it's really, really clean. After that's all done, dump that out, take this guy back let all this stuff dry out. Okay, this will rust in here. So you wanna let it all dry out real well. Get your little brushy down in that dude right there, scrub it real well. And every now and then you do have to take this off to clean the pin that's inside there. But I don't do that every time. I don't know if you're supposed to, but I don't. All right, let's talk about the critter. So the critter is cool. Mason jar is a great idea. You can save your paint in there. I really like that. Um, and again, the only real adjustable part on here is this guy here. So this is going to tell you how much paint comes out. So it goes down, you get almost done. I usually have it right about halfway through that. Where is the camera? Halfway through that hole right there. Um, this guy does need to be clean, but it doesn't clog up as fast as other ones. So you do have some time. You can put some tape, painter's tape on here, and um, it'll kind of keep this dry here so you can, uh, you know, you don't have to clean it right away, which is a really nice thing. This hole, oh, I stuck a nail in there. I can't get it out. You can see right here on the lid, there's a hole right there. That is really important that that stays clear because that's what lets the air, it's like a, a siphon kind of a thing. So stay that, like I just put, I just put like a nail in there when I'm not using it um, because I don't clean my stuff as well as, well as I could. So the but downfall to this one is that it's siphon. So as you can see, when you get to the bottom here, you've got about this much of your product that you're not gonna be able to get after. Um, and that's always a bummer, especially if you're down to the nitty gritty and you are almost out. But the critter is very nice. All right, guys, that's it. That is um, my explanation of those two sprayers. If you have any questions, please let me know and I will do my best to answer them. 
Hey, do me one more favor. Let me know if you stayed to the end to hear all of this. If you did, I will get a little bit more detailed with um, other tools that I use, Brad guns and different ones that I have and why I use what for what and all that fine kind of fun <laughs> kind of stuff. All right, you guys are awesome. And remember, only you can make it happen. See you next time. Don't forget, you can find all your Iron Orchid designs, DIY paint, Wise All paint, and other fun stuff on my website at windmillvintagedesigns.com. Thanks, guys. See you next time.